swim jig basics. Now the swim jig is a bait that has gotten really popular over the last decade or so, especially if you follow the Bassmaster Elite Series, dudes are smashing them on a swim jig. So let's, let's just cover the basics. I'm gonna show you rod, reel, choice. Uh, we're talking about the type of swim jigs, the type of trailers you wanna put on the back, and kind of how you're gonna use a swim jig to catch fish. Now, I, I'll have a swim jig, once the spawn is over, I'll have a swim jig handy for the next six months. Definitely, definitely the next six months. Um, if there's a shad spawn going on, it is a great, great bait to use. And you don't have to have a white one. Now, I've got, I've got a white one just so you can see it really good. Um, but white is a great color. I'm going to also have brim colors, and I'm going to have some darker colors like black, blue, and June bug for, for other situations, but we'll get into that here in, in just a minute. Uh, we have different size swim jigs. I, I fish the lighter ones, 3 16 5 16 is probably the most common. Quarter to 5 16 is the most common used for most things. And then you got 3 8 or, or 7 16 for a little bit deeper swim jig fishing. We'll get into that here in a second, but we're going to use bait casting equipment. This is a Cashin Icon rod that I designed for them, a swim jig rod. It is a seven foot, three inch, medium heavy, moderate taper. Moderate taper means it's not stiff as a board. As you can see, it bends throughout. Now this is a lot softer than what a lot of people fish a swim jig on. They're fishing swim jigs on flipping sticks. I think that is absolutely the wrong thing to do. I used to sw fish a swim jig on braid most of the time, but I have gotten away from that because I feel like your hookup ratio is way higher on fluorocarbon. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw 16, 18, or 20, kind of depending on the depth that I wanna fish and how, how thick the cover is. Now I'll go to 30 pound braid or 50 pound braid under certain circumstances, but that's very rare. Like I said, I've gone to fluorocarbon almost exclusively. I'm going to use at least a 7 to 1 gear ratio reel. It's a Daiwa Tatula 100. A good quality reel is going to make your day a lot more enjoyable. And then, like I said, it mentioned uh, the Sunline shooter in either 16, 18, or 20, kind of depending on the, the type of cover. That's what I'm going to be fishing most of the time. And uh, this is a, a Missile Baits mini swim jig. It's just a little bit smaller, more compact profile. But let's get in to how to fish this thing. Now, there's two basic concepts on fishing a swim jig there's what i call the northern swim jig and then there's the alabama swim jig and so the alabama a lot of people call it the alabama shake the northern swim jig is more of a real steady reel almost like you're fishing a swim bait so here's the here's more of the northern swim jig you're gonna you're gonna cast it out there and you're just gonna you're just gonna reel it reel it like you would be reeling a swim jig you can actually put a swim jig on the back of, you know, any any swim jig that you're fishing. And that's what a lot of the guys up north do. They either put a big grub or a swim bait or something like this. This is a Missile Baits Mini D-Chunk. It's got good action. These little tails right there kick like crazy as it's coming through the water. So as I'm steady, steady reeling it through the water, you can see them just kicking like crazy. So that northern swim jig style, you're just going to be steady reeling it. That is really good around grass lines, grass under the surface, and also around shallow cover. Like I'm going to, I may be throwing to some of these lay downs or sticks and just steady reeling, steady reeling that swim jig through it and maybe bouncing off some of those limbs, maybe bouncing off a rock or two on the bottom. That's where that northern swim jig is going to be, is going to be handy. So that's the, that's more of the northern swim jig style. Now, the Alabama Shake is one of those things that I really think originated from everything that I've been told and, and all the people that I know, originated around Lay Lake in Alabama. So everybody in that whole region, for the most part, when they fish a swim jig, they're fishing it like this right here. They're throwing it out, and as soon as it hits, they're shaking the rod like crazy. And what that does is that, that, that swim jig is not sitting still it's constant that skirt is constantly pulsing it's constantly bouncing up and down i'll show you kind of what it looks like in the water so that 
you know, the bait's going to go down and, and come up. You're trying to trigger fish anytime that they see that bait. It's hopping up and down like that. It's, it's essentially almost like a jerk bait to where that thing is constantly twitching and moving and you're always trying to trigger a fish no matter if it's in open water or if it's near some grass that you might be throwing near or if you skip it up under a dock, any place like that and you're, you're shaking it like that, that thing is constantly moving and, and man, they will come out and smoke it. I have caught a lot of fish, both techniques. So how do I fish a swim jig? I fish both. I'll do both. I might, I might throw it out there and I'll, I'll steady reel it near something. I'll get near a piece of cover and then I'll give it a couple shakes or a rip and then I'll, I'll steady reel it again and then I'll give it, a, I, I make it very erratic. I think that's key. Make your swim jig retrieve erratic. You can go steady and then stop it and give it a, you know, you can hit it with the reel. You can hit it with the rod, make it hop and rip it. Um, you can slow roll it until you hit a piece of grass and then rip it off. Anything extra action wise that you can do like that is going to trigger those bites and just to let you know why i have a slower tapered rod i missed a lot of fish on a swim jig early on I missed a ton of them i'm talking they would come up toilet bowl flush it and and then you'd set the hook and you wouldn't get them in the boat uh, i had this happen to me at a in lay lake probably 15 years ago in a bassmaster classic I lost one between eight and nine pounds. You can ask Russ Lane. He'll verify the size. He saw it. He was fishing the same pocket I was. But that when I lost that fish, it didn't register on me what happened, what the problem was. It wasn't until I hooked a fish that ate the, that ate the swim jig about that far. And the water is relatively clear. It was close. I saw the fish come up and eat it. Right after that fish ate it, it kind of sat there. I set the total wood. It's a Bassmaster Classic. You know, I'm excited. So I set the all total wood, had 50 pound braid. I set the wood to him. I saw that fish's mouth pop open. My jig came flying out. The jig hook point actually hit the roof of that fish's mouth and it bent the hook point out. I hit it so hard. It was so close. There was no stretch. 50 pound braid. It's too stiff of a rod. And I ripped that, I mean, I ripped the four pounder, I ripped the swim jig right out of his mouth. I know that I did the exact same thing to that eight or nine pounder. It was a little further out, but I did the same thing to him. So over the next year or two, I started experimenting. When I would get bit in practice, I would be fishing the swim jig out there and I would get bit. You know what I would do? I would just keep reeling. I would just keep reeling. The rod would load up and I caught 10 out of 10. It, the, my hookup ratio was ridiculous. So... I realized that I was setting the hook too hard. When when those fish are getting that swim jig, a lot of times they'll get it and the, the swim jig will be backwards in their mouth. So if you go totally whacking, jacking them, trying to stack them, the swim jig will flip around and pop their mouth open at the same time and you'll get nothing. You'll get squat, you'll get bubkiss, you'll catch nothing. So what happens, I feel like, is if, you, if that, they eat that swim jig and you just start reeling into them, you're going to turn that swim jig around in their mouth just enough that the hook point is going in the right direction. Then by the time you lean back, you're going to lean back. You're going to set that hook into the fish, the fish's mouth. Then when he, when he goes to shake his head, the hook's already buried and he is done. He is not coming off. And I'm telling you, this is after years and hundreds and hundreds of fish on a swim jig, years and years of catching fish. So that's one of the reasons I've gone to a softer rod and gone to fluorocarbon. I feel like you get more bites on the fluorocarbon than you do on the braid. I will argue with Steve Kennedy, who fishes it on braid like 99% of the time. Yes, he almost won a Bassmaster Classic on Lake Conroe on a swim jig. But I will still argue with Steve Kennedy because he lost fish that should have won that tournament for him. If he had fluorocarbon, he probably would have won that Bassmaster Classic. Just saying, probably would have won it. Steve is a great guy, great fisherman, um, but we differ. We, we differ on that, that strategy. So as you're fishing it, uh, one of the big things, as I mentioned earlier, is you can skip a swim jig. You can get that bait up under cover. Like, so if there's a dock right here, uh, I'm going to practice up, and you can take that swim jig, especially if your, your trailer has some body, like that mini D-chunk has a big flat belly on it. So that 
that really helps, and it has a flat head on it, on the, on the jig, so it helps the bait skip across the water. So you can come up to a dock, you know, skip it up under there, sidearm roll cast. You can put that jig back there and skip it back into areas where you normally can't get another bait. You can go to marina docks. Uh, you go back to marina docks, skip your skip your swim jig way up under there. You might be fishing a spinner bait around marina docks in that shad spawn. You pick up that swim jig and you can skip that swim jig a lot further back into those slips than you can throw a, a, a spinner bait. So that's one of the huge advantages right there to the swim jig. And it's just one of those baits, if you don't have a lot of confidence, um, go, take it post spawn and, and get you two or three different colors, get you a, a brim color, get you a, a darker color, and get you a white one, and just go fishing, go down the bank, and uh, you'll catch a ton of fish on it. Now I mentioned the, the different sizes. Uh, this is a 5.16, so this is probably the, the best all around size. You can fish it, um, I would say six inches to about two feet deep is the, is the effective depth range. When you go lighter than that, when you go to like the 3 16ths, the 3 16ths is what I'm gonna fish from zero to one foot. So let's say you go into a, a river system or you go into an area and it's got really shallow grass and you've only got a little small window that's above that grass. That's where that 3 16ths comes in huge. You, can, you don't have to fish the bait 100 miles an hour. You can fish it slow. You can fish it right up under the surface and they will come and wolf it. Is it wolf or wolf? I don't know, either way, they're gonna come up and wolf wolf it off the surface and it's a lot of fun. Like I said, five sixteenths, six inches to probably two feet is the, the key range. One, one, one foot, foot and a half is probably the, the money range for the five sixteenths. Then when you go to like a seven sixteenths, that's when you're gonna fish from like that, that foot and a half to two feet range all the way down to like four to five feet. If you're fishing, offshore grass and a lot of people are throwing chatter baits things like that you can pick up that heavier swim jig make those casts slow roll it until you hit that grass pop it free trigger a lot of bites that way and and it's, there's no vibration like a like a, a chatter bait or something like that it's it's almost like that the subtle the subtle little vibration it can be a lot more appealing at times. So uh, that's how I use that deeper one. So I've got to have all three sizes in my repertoire for swim jigs. So that's really the overview of swim jig basics. Uh, if you have any more comments or any more questions, please drop it down there in the bottom and I'll be do my best to answer those questions for you. But I'm going to get back to, uh, you know, trying to get one to uh, toilet bowl flush this swim jig here.